Welcome to the Real View podcast, where Ohio realtors connect you to innovators and influencers, keeping you with the real view of real estate. Whether you're a broker, agent, first time home buyer, industry leader, or just happen to stumble upon our podcast today, you can expect to hear tips, tools, tricks, interesting information, and so much more from the experts in Ohio's real estate game. Hi everyone, welcome to the Real View episode. I'm your host, Allison. With me today is Evan Fuchs. He's a national speaker, a past state president, four-time Realtor of the Year, and, and an active broker owner. He has a focus on leadership, team building, sales, and strategic planning, and in the midst of all that, he is also going to be present at our annual convention um, this September in Cleveland, Ohio, and Evan's here today. He's going to give us um, a little preview into what he's uh, going to be speaking about at convention. He's going to be speaking about a couple different things, but we are getting him to briefly touch on one of his um, topics that he's going to be talking about at our convention. So Evan, welcome to the show. We're so happy to have you here today. Hey, thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks. So Evan, tell us a little bit about um, you and how you got started um, in the real estate industry. And then I will get into my favorite question, which is the real view question. So go ahead and start with you a little bit about you and your background in the industry. Sure. So I've been in real estate for uh, 25 years. I'm in Bullhead City, Arizona which is near where Nevada and California and Arizona come together. So we're on the uh, Colorado River, about an hour and a half south of Las Vegas. So a lot of times when I say Arizona, people think Phoenix, but we're on the west side of the state on the river. I grew up in Southern California and I actually moved out here to get into real estate. I was around real estate uh, my whole life. My parents were real estate developers. And I was always fascinated with real estate. When I was going to school to Cal State Fullerton, I was in the library reading books about other people's money and the American dream and all that kind of stuff. So I had an opportunity to come out here and moved out here on a two-year plan about 25 years ago. That's awesome. So was this always kind of (laughs) something you knew that you wanted to do? I know you mentioned kind of was within your family. Did you always see yourself kind of on this career path? No, 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 (laughs) not at all. (laughs) I didn't know what I was going to do exactly. But, and to be honest, like I was just not real. I was sort of treading water. Yeah. I was going to school. I was bartending. I was doing, and, and I just, suddenly felt like I saw a future where that was going to be my life. And so um, I moved out to Arizona, got my real estate license. A few years later, opened up a brokerage and I've just been, it's just been my thing ever since. But no, it wasn't, it was not pre, like many realtors, it was not on purpose. It was uh, kind of accidental that I found my way into it. And uh, so I, I think yeah, and you've had you know such great success, um, you know, with it. And mentioning you know in the opening, just some of your career achievements. I mean, being a past state president, four-time realtor of the year. Was this what was your path of leadership like? Was that kind of always when you got started in leadership or in in real estate? Did you see yourself going down that path, or why was it important to you to get get involved in your, in your leadership? Uh, it was honestly, it was not important. It wasn't even on my radar. <laughs> I was. Um, all I, all I wanted to do was make a living and succeed in, in selling real estate. To be frank, earning commissions is what I was interested in. Uh, but not long into um, my real estate career, something happened that made me mad in terms of a, a fee. And I, I asked, you know, who do I complain to about this? And I was sent down to the local board. And then I woke up a few years later and I was president. Was basically. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> so that's where, you know, I have this idea of us being accidental agents and accidental leaders. But that opened the door for me to actually meet people who's, uh, who, uh, for whom volunteer leadership was having an impact on their career. And um, had I not done that, I really don't think I would even be in business today. Mm-hmm. The doors have been open for me. So it was a very happy accident. No, I love that you mentioned. I think that's so important. And we've talked about leadership on this podcast and, and why you should get involved multiple times. But um, I love hearing that perspective and hearing that, you know, it really changed your career for the better. So that's awesome. And I love that you brought up to the intentional agent and accidental agents, which we're going to get into in a minute, okay. which is the topic, you know, of today's show, the intentional agents, which is the topic um, of your convention uh, session, one of the few of them that you're going to be um, providing to us at convention. But before 
before we get into that and all of that good stuff, I have to ask our signature question that we ask all of the guests that come on to the Real View podcast, which is the podcast is called The Real View. So I want to know, what is the best view that you've ever seen? Okay, so I, I actually prepared for this because <laughs> I've li- listening to the podcast, I, I love it's such a great question. Thank you. And my wife and my two daughters and I are travelers. We love to travel. So I'm like, oh my God, I have so many things I could say. Mm-hmm. But in, in really thinking about it, I think my favorite view has to be from uh, the Scout look at, Lookout at, at Zion National Park. We did that hike. Um, it's at the base of Angel's Landing. So it's a two mile hike up with a thousand foot elevation in that two miles. So it's a really grueling hike that ends with the these famous switchbacks. And it's so difficult, or was for us, you know. But when the four of us got to the top of the switchbacks and rounded the corner and saw, got to look out uh, and see Angel's Landing and the Zion Canyon and all that, it was, I don't know, it's one of those things that's like like a life-changing mm. sort of moment, you know. We were so thrilled in accomplishment and the glory of nature and doing it together. And so, I have many others I could share, but I think that's my favorite. No, that's awesome. And it it does kind of combine all those things together. You know, you're so happy that you completed the hike and then you're in the midst of this beautiful place and just, you know, probably recognizing your place in the world and just really thinking about like, wow, you know, I get to be a part of this beautiful place that we call home. (laughs) Seriously. You know, it's funny though. I was, so this was on my mind and I sent a pic, we have like a family text thread, you know, and I sent a picture of these switchbacks to the family thread, just because I was thinking about it with no context or anything. And my oldest daughter just gave it a thumbs down and said, never again. (laughs) (laughs) That is so funny. (laughs) That is so funny. I don't want to digress too much here. But I have a friend who just moved to uh, Seattle, Washington, and she's getting prepared to hike Mount Rainier. And um, I said, good luck. You know, I'm really proud of you and proud that you get to, you know, do that. But like, that's all you. <laughs> um, so I so I totally understand where your daughter's coming from. Um, that's <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, that. thanks for playing <laughs> along with my game. I always love to hear um, um, these answers. I think it's really cool to hear people's perspective and travels and, and things that they've uh, seen and done in their life. So thank you for answering. Yeah, Let's bet. get uh, kind of into the show and into today's topic, the invention, the intentional agent and what that means, why being intentional is so important. Maybe we should start with that kind of what does it mean to be intentional and, and how do you do it in your work and why is it so important to do it um, as an agent? This first hit my radar about 15 years ago. I was at a real estate conference and I was listening to a speaker, Larry Kendall from uh, Fort Collins, who some of your listeners may know from Ninja Selling. And he was talking about how some, uh, you, in your business, you can either be on purpose or you can be on accident. And uh, he said something about on accident agents, as he called them, that really like struck a chord with me. He said, if you do things on accident, you're just letting business happen to you. Mm. So you're sort of this passive passenger waiting for something to happen. And that's not really any way to run a business. And it's certainly not a sustainable business model. So I've been sort of riffing and working on that for years, trying to figure out what I observe people doing intentionally that makes them successful. I mean, it's not fun. It's funny slash sad. (laughs) Like I'll ask, you can take any group of agents and ask them, you kind of explain, okay, an accidental agent lets business happen to them. They don't really have a plan. And when the market is good, they're doing good. And when it's not, you know, they kind of, it's like a candle in the wind sort of a thing. And then an intentional agent is someone who works from a plan and they have systems that keep them engaged and they measure their return on investment. And I'll say, so, you know, of all the agents out there, what percentage of the agents would you say are accidental agents, you know? And it is brutal. Like you can... 80-20 is like a good, generous response, you know? So the reason that this intrigues me is because it's a great differentiator. It's like if you just set out and get clear about what you're trying to accomplish and how you're going to get there before you start doing stuff, you're separating yourself from the majority of your competitors who who are, and and it's not a judgment, it's just kind of a more passive approach to the business. Uh, So being intentional means working, recognizing that you are uh, running a business that you're in charge, you're the CEO, making plans, developing systems, having methods of keeping yourself engaged and on track and accountable, that you're measuring your results, and you're just overall proactive as opposed to waiting. 
Mm -hmm. And one of the things that can happen when you're accidental or living that more passive approach is you leave a lot up to just whatever happens, happens. And, and, you know, what that can mean to your business. And I know it's kind of a good thought period, thought to have, you know, sometimes in your life, you know, I can't control this, whatever happens, happens. But like, talk a little bit about like why that approach maybe isn't the best to have in your business and what it can mean to your clients and to your stress levels if you kind of have that just like leaving it up to chance, whatever happens, happens approach. Yeah, well, I, I agree with you. And so like, we like to talk about rewarding your actions and behaviors, not the outcomes, right? I believe in the outcomes, you you, you have to let those roll off your, your shoulder because you can't really, you can do everything you can to affect them, but in the end, the outcome is going to be what it is. What you can, can do is control how you show up and what how you're acting and reacting to affect an outcome and then let the chips fall where they may. Mm-hmm. So the main problem, as I see it, with just letting things come at you is, if you first of all, most markets are seasonal. So other than crazy markets where they're just accelerating, um, you you know, for long periods of time, if you look at a calendar year, there's going to be highs and lows in terms of demand. You know, if you're in a if you're in a market that like that has a a rough winter, there's not going to be a whole lot of activity usually in the winter, you know, and there's a seasonality to the market. So if you just sit back and let the mark, let things happen to you, you, you're going to rise and fall with that seasonality. Another thing that happens is that I see a lot of agents do, and I've done this myself, is you get busy and you focus on your pending transactions and you let the, the business generating side of things fall behind. And then you wake up after all your transactions are closed and you got nothing. And so now you have another cycle of ups and downs. So part of being intentional is recognizing the activities that you have to you know, conduct consistently so otherwise you're going to have half a good year and half a bad year at best you know this episode of the real view is brought to you by the ohio association of community colleges ohio's network of community colleges provides accessible training that accommodates the busy lifestyles of aspiring real estate professionals at half the price of a traditional university With convenient locations in every part of the state, as well as online options, Ohio's community colleges are your smart choice for pre-licensing education. For more details or to start the journey to a real estate career, visit the education page at ohiorealtors.org and then click on the pre-licensed course locations. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned, too, that there's quite a few agents out there who may be living that um, accidental approach. But there is a way, you know, if you recognize that kind of you're, you're doing that, you're leaving a lot to chance, that you can turn from being accidental into intentional. And you kind of have some habits or tricks or ways that you can kind of do that in your business life, in your personal life, that gets you to that more intentional approach. And I think you have a, like maybe seven-ish, a few different habits that mm-hmm. intentional agents have that really helps them um, succeed in their business. Why don't you kick us off with um, sharing some of what those habits are? Yeah, so I completely stole the idea from uh, Covey's Seven Habits of uh, Highly Effective People with Seven Habits of Intentional Agents. But this is, so, you know, I'm, I'm a, a broker owner. I also speak around the country and I work, I uh, do strategic planning and business planning with brokerages and associations. And so this isn't like me sitting down and saying, here's what I think we should do. These ideas come from watching people who are successful. Um, So the first one is to sort of define what it means to be intentional. So the first rule of, or the first habit is to be intentional. And what I like to talk about is creating alignment in your business. So what, let me explain what I mean by that. Real estate is such a great profession. We get to participate in the American dream. We get to help people get where they want to go, accomplish their goals, whether it's raising a family, an investment vehicle, or both. You know, it's so great. And to be able to make a living doing that. And it's also this world of entrepreneurship. But with this world of entrepreneurship, like we tend to like, you know, bootstrappers, like jump in and start doing stuff. And so what I try to encourage people to do in being intentional is first get clear about what you're trying to accomplish. What do you want to be known for? Who are you trying to help? What do you bring to the table? What are your strengths? You know, that's all about your intention. And then from there is sort of a planning phase of, okay, let me set the direction of where I want to take my business. And then 
take action. So, you know, we get the, this, the zip code just opened up and, you know, if you just pay, sign up for this and close one transaction this year, it'll pay for, and, you know, this park bench and like all these things thrown at us all the time. And I just like to make sure that, we're, that our actions or the things that we're doing, investing time and money and energy in are aligned with who we want to be, what our intentions are. So that's what I mean by the first habit of being intentional is make sure the stuff, first of all, it's great to be doing stuff because if you're doing something that's a lot better than doing nothing, but make sure that your actions as, as a business person are consistent with who you want to be, what you want to be known for. Yeah. And really spending some time finding who you are, I think is so important, you know, too, and falling under that, that first habit is just figuring out who you are as a person, as an agent. And, you know, like you said, what you want to do and what your goals are. Um, I think that's, that's super important in regards to that first uh, habit. Yeah. And, and part of it, like I said, and this is something that people, you know, if you're busy being a realtor, like showing houses, putting on lock boxes, putting up signs, writing contracts, doing all the realtor stuff, it's not always easy to take time out of your business to think about your strengths and what you should build on. But the business planning or strategic planning, it can be so complicated. And I like to simplify things and say, okay, let's find out what's working. Let's do more of that. And let's apply what makes us successful in those areas to other areas. And, you know, you can delegate your weaknesses. You can hire people. You can, you can, you know, you should be improving yourself, but I like to help people find out what their strengths are. So that's one of the things that we're going to be doing in our session is I'm going to walk you through some questions and some sort of self reflection of your business to figure out, okay, here's, here's what I'm all about. Let me build on that. Yeah, absolutely. What's next? What is another good habit that we should focus on um, if we are trying to become that intentional agent? Well, the next one I like to talk about is being proactive. So that that's sort of what I was describing before about, you know, instead of being passive, you know, but, but being proactive means you develop a plan, you know what you're going to be spending your time on, you know who your clients are, uh, you know how to uh, run your business, and you have systems in place to keep you doing that. So to sort of drill down on that, you know, income producing activities are uh, one area that just can't be delegated. Now you can hire people to do services for you, but ultimately as the CEO of your business, you're responsible to make sure that you are uh, generating business. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I've moved more towards, uh, uh, that's, that's a, a relationship building. That's about relationship building in, in, in my case. And, and many people are looking for repeat and referral business. So being proactive means that you have you put time in your schedule where you're reaching out to your clients, you're staying connected with them, uh, and you're listening for real estate opportunities. As simple as that is, putting it in your schedule, um, honoring that commitment, and then moving it. If you you know if if you don't have time today because a client showed up or life showed up, moving it somewhere else so you don't miss those things. And as the CEO of your business, you report to yourself. Right. So most of us don't have that. You know, we don't have a CEO as realtors, but the question is, if you did, what would they say? How would they evaluate you, you know, or what would they be encouraging you to do and what kind of feedback would you have from them? So the second habit is to, is to be proactive and not wait for business. We, the, all these sellers markets that we're in at the moment, it, it's hard enough. You know, we're going to be working with um, buyers, writing multiple offers, a lot of rejection, a lot of uh, managing of expectations. And we have to have, we have to keep working at that. So we're bringing buyers and sellers. We, we need more people in our pipeline. Yeah. And that, that's where you, you can't just wait for them to come to you. You have to reach out to them. Yeah, I think it's more important, you know, now now than ever, you know, with inventory so low and multiple offers and you kind of have to be being proactive if you want to be kind of successful in today's world because it is so crazy. Lead us into yeah. number four. Uh, well, the next one is, is uh, to be a self-leader. Mm -hmm. So self-leadership is something that that I really like to work on with people. It's about, you know, managing yourself first. And there's three, there's three components of self-leadership that together make a huge difference, not only in business, but in life. Okay. So, so the breakdown of self-leadership is being, having self-awareness. So self-awareness is, you know, when we talk to people, when you talk to someone who lacks self-awareness, you know what they, yep. <laughs> what they look like, right? Yep. So someone who's self-aware, like, you know how you're perceived, you know, uh, your personality, you know, 
if you're showing up as a hot mess and your emotions are all over the place. Uh, so, um, you know, that gets into the conversation about emotional intelligence and all of that, but, but recognizing that we're this central figure in the real estate transaction and through negotiating, negotiating communications, um, our dealings with our clients, the other, the other realtor and all the parties involved. If you're, if you lack that self-awareness, we can have a really negative impact on the outcome. But when you're able to say, okay, I'm, this is frustrating. I'm experiencing like a primal emotion. I'm angry. I'm sad, you know, and, and you're aware of that. The next piece is self-regulation where you can say, okay, I'm going to take a breath in between what I'm feeling and what I'm saying or how, or, or any of my tells so that I can positively affect the outcome here. You see this in negotiating all the time where agents let their ego get involved or their, you know, and, and by the way, like it, it is an emotionally charged endeavor to buy or sell a house. Mm-hmm. I don't care what side you're on. <laughs> it and is. today more so than ever, right? Yeah. And, and, you, and, and look at like a couple of years ago, we got locked up for a while and, and then the world turned upside down and then we were let loose on this wild market. So there's all kinds of stuff happening. It doesn't mean we don't feel those things, but we actually recognize them and say, I'm going to be the professional here. And so in negotiating, that is really important. And in communicating, that's really important. So that's self-regulation. And the third piece of self-leadership is self-motivation, getting yourself out of bed in the morning, showing up even when it's hard. Um, And these things are, you know, it's not like they're simple solutions, but the study of self-leadership has such an impact on leading other people Mm -hmm. because we get, you know, there's no leader in in the real estate transaction. Mm -hmm. There's lots of players, but there's no leader. So my philosophy is let's appoint ourselves the leader and try to wrangle this, all the troops together to get past the finish line. But you can't do that unless you got your own act together first. So that's the third one is uh, self-leadership. Yeah, you got to lead by example and and kind of, you know, it goes into, uh, you know, the first or the second one that you mentioned about being proactive and really taking the step to work on yourself and come up with those things and come up with, you know, what you want to be and and, and, uh, what your goals are. So they kind of like all go together. It fits in, you know, really nicely with with the two other habits that we were mentioning. Well, Allison, think of it like this. Like if you think of agents in your market who you consider to be professionals, you know, like the solid agents, they demonstrate these things that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. There's nobody going like, hey, I didn't see you at the office today. Or, you know, they're they're getting out of bed with a plan and executing on it. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're even keeled. They're good communicators, you know, so you can look around for, for models of this in your market. And the same way you can see people who don't demonstrate these traits and see the effect on their business, you know? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. What's the next habit? Okay, the next one is to be of value. And I'm going to try to, sometimes I hop up on a, a soapbox when I talk about value, because as a rule, we're not great as realtors in identifying and articulating and communicating what we bring to the table. Mm-hmm. And at, at the same time, that's being um, exploited. You know, our value was once I have the MLS book, so come to me. And over the years, that has changed. And little by little, companies, new business models, other entrepreneurs, disruptors, if you want to use that word, people are finding ways to capture that value. And so one of the things that you need to be clear about as a realtor is why do you deserve to be there and getting paid? Yeah. And and, and it has to be real. So you have to be able to place a value on yourself and your time. But in order to be able to expect to get paid on that time, you have to sh- you have to do something tangible, and you can't leave it up to the other person to determine what that is. You have to be able to, like I said, articulate it. Uh, why should I hire you? Why should I hire you for this amount when I can hire this other person at this amount, or I can do it myself for free? Mm-hmm. And this is even more. You know, I'm I'm not sure how many agents are aware of what's you know, the direction things have been heading in terms of like clear cooperation with the MLSs and more transparency with buyer agent commissions and things like that, that this is net, this is going to be more important every day that we have something valuable that is worth getting paid for. So I think this is really critical. 
I do too. And I think, you know, it's maybe one of the things that as realtors, we don't always do a great job of is selling ourselves. And I think that can kind of be hard. I mean, I know sometimes people don't want to brag about themselves or don't want to kind of share what they do or, or, you know, how well they do it. But I think we have to get over that. And I think we have to, you know, kind of be put this more as an emphasis as we are going out our day to day business is doing selling ourselves and doing it in a way that, you know, we are really communicating that value. I think that's so important. I think that's something that we can all do a better job at because it's a little uncomfortable, you know, but it's so important. Yeah, it is. It is uncomfortable, especially if you're the, the modest type. So I have a couple of suggestions yeah, on that. Yeah. The first one would be, we know better than anybody what we do, you know, so maybe get get a clear picture for yourself of what you do throughout the day and how um, your clients' lives would be different if you if they were working with someone else or if they were unrepresented. You can even start writing down the things that you do. But what you want to do is look for the things that they can't do for themselves. So a great two, here's two ways that you can answer this question. One is think of your favorite client, somebody that you love to work with, and ask yourself if they had a friend that was looking to sell their house and they said to their friend, hey, you've got to talk to my realtor, Allison. She does a great job. And that friend were to say, well, I, why do I need to talk? What's so great about Allison? What would that great client say? Mm-hmm. You know, so think about what your favorite clients would say about you mm-hmm. is, is a soft way to get there. An even more powerful way is reach out to your clients and ask them. Ask them. Do it through social media. Pick up the phone if you still remember how to use the phone for talking. <laughs> you know, call them and ask them. Send them a text. But just say, hey, I'm working on my business and I'm just trying to get clear about what I offer my clients. What, what is it about me that stands out from other people that you've worked with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those those testimonials are, are so important and you should always, you know, be grabbing those whether you're trying to work up your selling pitch and selling that value or if you're trying to sell your business as well, you know, those are always a great thing to go after those testimonials. And I believe you have just a few more other habits that can make you be more intentional. Go ahead and go on with the next one. Okay, so the, the next one is to be a pro. And a pro means And these kind of build in order, as you can see, Mm -hmm. being a pro means, you know, your market, you know, your numbers, the numbers in your market, you know, your production, you know, your business, right? You know, the actual professional, like as a pair compared to an amateur, you're a professional, Um, you know, your industry, you contribute to your industry's evolution. Those are all things about being a professional beyond the basics of professionalism, which is, you know, your appearance and the way you communicate and, and, and all of that. But again, think of someone in your market who you consider to be a pro and ask, are people thinking of you in that way? And there are a ton of like really great trainings out there that can kind of help increase professionalism. I know Evan does a great job with his trainings and things that he does. Coming to our convention can really help you, you know, up your professional game. I know NAR, the National Association of Realtors, has an amazing commitment to excellence program that can help you up mm-hmm. your professionalism too. So there's so many tools out there that are available for you to really up that. And, and, and I think on commitment to excellence, it's worth mentioning, that's free. Mm-hmm. And you can do, that's self-paced all online. So um, I think that's a great, if if you're looking to increase professionalism, that's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Um, But just think of the other things that that go into being a professional in terms of understanding your market and market trends and uh, supply and demand and being a good negotiator. There's a lot that falls in that bucket of, of being a professional. Yeah. And then um, why don't we go ahead and go on to at the end of the habits that you should develop, those seven habits. Um, go ahead, Evan, okay. and, and share, yeah, share what's left for us. Okay, so there's two more. One of those being to be focused and maintain focus. So this goes into, you know, I started talking in the beginning of the show about my family. And this is something that I've had to learn over the years is that your business drives your life. What you're able to do in business funds what you want to do with your life, which is really important. And so for some people, there's this badge of honor about I work a million hours a week and I'm always available and yeah. you know, all of that. For me, over, and I used to be that way, but what it's turned into over time is I know what I wanted, what's important to me in my life at, at this moment anyway. And so I look for my business to enable me to do those things as opposed to living to make another sale, you know? 
So that's one way that I stay focused is understanding why I'm doing what I'm doing in, in, on the business side. And then I, I kind of work backwards. So this gets into, into planning and figure out like how much is enough? How can I become more efficient so I can get the same results in less time so I can get out of work and get back to living my life? Creating goals um, and steps for how you're going to achieve those goals and then measuring them so that you keep your eye on the prize. That means revisiting, evaluating where you are, doing more of what's working, some of the things we talked about earlier, and then be grateful for, you know, the opportunity to like be an ambassador to this American dream where you get to help people like we talked about before. So it's different for everybody as far as what drives them, Mm -hmm. but latching on to why they're doing what they're doing as a way of staying focused on on the grind, I Mm -hmm. think is really powerful. And again, we don't always take time to do that because we get stuck in that grind, like on, on the hamster wheel. But I think it's really important to step out of that every once in a while and get a bigger picture view so you can be more productive in less time. And that's one of the things I like to focus on. Yeah, no, for sure. I love that you mentioned that. I think like there's such this grind culture that's out there. I just, you know, made up that phrase, but I think it's so true that in America and in today's society that if you aren't a workaholic, it's almost like you're lazy, you're slacking off. But I I heard this quote the other day. It's really stuck with me. It says, there's nothing admirable about burnout. And I just thought that was really, that was really a good perspective on it. You know, I don't think anyone is like, wow, he's burnt out. I'm so, you know, that's so cool. Like, I don't think anyone (laughs) thinks that, you know, but yet that's almost to the point that we push ourselves is to that burnout point. And it, and it's, you know, it's, it shouldn't be as accepted, I think, as, as it is today. So, yeah. And I I think, I think that you making up the grind culture, I think is, is perfect. You know, and, and then you also have to have a side hustle. So yeah. You have to hustle and have a side hustle, you know. <laughs> if you aren't having uh, and, and three I, jobs, you're not doing enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I really like, again, I don't know. I, I, now that I've been in the business a while, maybe it's easier for me to have this perspective. But um, there's not enough talk about taking care of yourself. Yes. You know? Yes. <laughs> Physically, emotionally, mentally, and recognizing that it's a weird time right now. Yes. It is really weird. And there's there are pressures all over the place. And so if that burnout, I think, comes a lot faster right now yep. if you're not taking care of yourself. And so, yeah, no, no, um, wait, what was the quote again? Uh, there's, there's nothing there's no admirable about burnout. Burnout, yes. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm going to keep both of those. You gave me that and, and the grind culture. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and then you have uh, one last habit for us today, and then we're going to hear so much more from you at our convention. But go ahead and share the last and final um, habit that makes an intentional agent. Okay, so the last one is what I call hacking the system. And this is based on watching uh, people – Watching realtors be able to produce beyond um, uh, produce numbers that are in excess of what you think you could accomplish in the amount of time. So this is, you know, there's this philosophy of being nice to your future self and going, okay, right now I'm in a space where I'm thinking big picture. I have the phone turned off. I'm thinking about my business. What can I do to help myself? So when I'm stuck in that grind or in the moment, like make things easier. And there's a lot of there used to be this site, I don't even know if it's still around anymore, but it was huge life hacker where they would mm. talk about life hacks. Mm-hmm. It was all kind of, some of, it, I don't know, I was into that for a while, then it became kind of absurd, <laughs> but it's shortcuts. It's like, how can I, I help myself in the future by developing dialogues, intake sheets, showing what the buying process looks like, uh, steps in, in building your transaction files, saving like text snippets for communicating with people, making videos for answering frequently asked questions. There's all kinds of places where you can create systems and then always be in a feedback loop with yourself about these systems to go, how can I make them better? You go on a listing appointment, you didn't get the listing, take a minute and go like, okay, what, where did it go south? What can I do next time? And, and if you do that regularly, you can develop these, you know, what I'm calling hacks that will get you back into your life you know, so that you're, you're, you're making more dollars per hour is basically what it boils down to. You're saving yourself time. So that's why I like to end with that one because yeah. it's, it's, there's all kinds of ways that you can apply that, but it takes going, okay, I'm going to take a minute out of my business and think about this so I can work a little bit smarter. Smarter, so those not are the harder. Seven habits. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. 
Like I said, you're going to uh, share so much more about this during your session at convention and even, and give us some yes. more ways on how to implement them in everyday business. And I know you mentioned some great tips and tools how to do that um, just now, but we're going to really dive into it. It'll be an interactive workshop. You'll learn how to apply these habits, which I think is going to be super cool. So we can't wait to have you uh, joining us in Ohio, uh, Evan, in September. It's going to be really great to, to have you back. I know you're a friend of ours and you've done multiple events and trainings for us um, in the past. So we're always happy to have you back. And thanks for joining us first time on the podcast, but hopefully we'll have you back sometime soon. Yeah, I would love to. And thank you. I'm really looking forward to September. I've been uh, trying to get there in person for a few years, but the world has had other uh, things in mind. So I'm really excited to to come there and be with everybody. Thank you. Yeah, going to be um, a great event. Save the date. It is September 18th through the 21st um, in Cleveland, Ohio at the Cleveland Convention Center in the Hilton Hotel right next door to it. So going to be a great event. You'll hear from Evan and we have so many other wonderful speakers like him coming in to share, share their knowledge and experience with you guys. So it's going to be a great time. Evan, thank you so much again for joining me. And to all of our listeners, we'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks, Allison. Thank you for listening to The Real View. That wraps up today's episode. You can keep up with the latest on the podcast at ohiorealtors.org slash The Real View and on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Have questions, comments, or suggestions? We want to hear from you. Email us at podcast at ohiorealtors.org. We'll see you next time.